Hi everyone, I'd like to show you how to configure an IP multicast on your network. To start off, I'd like to explain what an IP multicast is and where it is used. IP multicast transmissions deliver packets from a source to a group of receivers. Compared to unicast and broadcast transmissions, IP multicast transmissions conserve network bandwidth and reduce loads on networks. IP multicast is widely used in IPTV, real-time data transmission, and multimedia conferencing services. So how do we configure multicast services on a campus network? This figure shows an example of a tree network. In order for multicast data to be sent from the source to the receiver, you need to configure an IP multicast on the entire network. First, configuring multicast on the Layer 3 network to implement multicast routing. Layer 3 multicast configurations can be completed in three steps. Step 1. Configure a unicast routing protocol to enable unicast communication. This is the prerequisite of multicast routing because multicast routing protocols cannot calculate forwarding paths and relay on the optimal forwarding path selected by a unicast routing protocol to create and maintain multicast routes. Step 2. Configuring Multicast Routing Protocol. The most commonly used multicast routing protocol is a PIMSM, also known as Protocol Independent Multicast Sparse Mode. On a PIMSM network, a device is to act as the rendezvous point to complete multicast source registration and multicast route setups. The RP is the core of the Layer 3 multicast network. The network device where multicast traffic converges is usually used as the rendezvous point. In this figure, the core switch, switch A, acts as the rendezvous point. Step 3. Enable IGMP, also known as the Internet Group Management Protocol. On user gateway interfaces, configure the user gateways as IGMP queries to create and maintain group membership based on multicast service requirements from downstream users. The PIMSM protocol needs to create multicast routes based on group membership information obtained from the IGMP queries so that multicast data can be forwarded to specific receiver network segments. In this figure, all downstream VLAN IF interfaces on the aggregation nodes must have IGMP enabled. After finishing the Layer 3 multicast configuration, configure a Layer 2 multicast on the Layer 2 network to forward multicast data through the Layer 2 outbound physical ports accurately. Accurate multicast forwarding can reduce bandwidth consumption on Layer 2 links. Source addresses for multicast packets are not multicast addresses. Thus, Layer 2 network devices cannot learn MAC address entries from received multicast packets. If a Layer 2 multicast is not configured, multicast packets will be broadcasted on Layer 2 networks, which results in a waste of link bandwidth. In this figure, you need to enable IGMP snooping in the VLANs corresponding to user-side VLAN IF interfaces on aggregation switches, as well as the VLANs used to forward multicast data on access switches. After you finish the complete configuration procedure, multicast data can be sent from the source to receivers that require the data. Now, I will show you the procedure for when to configure IP multicasts on this network. Step 1. Configure a unicast routing protocol on switch A, B, and C to ensure unicast route reachability. Step 2. Configure the PIMSM protocol. First, enable multicast routing on switch A, switch B, and switch C, and enable PIMSM on all three interfaces of these switches to establish PIM neighbor relationships between them. Here, the configuration on switch A is provided as an example. Second, 
configure VLAN IF300 on switch A as a candidate BSR and candidate rendezvous point for the dynamic rendezvous point election. Step 3. Enable IGMP on user side VLAN IF interfaces for switches B and C. Here, the configuration for switch B is provided as an example. Step 4. Enable IGMP snooping in VLANs corresponding to user side VLAN IF interfaces for switches B and C and in the VLANs used to forward multicast data on switches D to G. Here, the configuration on switch B is provided as an example. Let me show you the detailed configuration procedure and commands. Step 1. Configure a unicast routing protocol. Here, I use the OSPF protocol. I'm not going to show you the specific configuration procedure because it is a commonly used routing protocol. After finishing the configuration, run the display IP routing table command on switch A. You can see the three routes to receiver network segments 10.1.1.0, 10.1.2.0, and 10.1.3.0. Step 2. Enable multicast routing globally on all layer 3 devices and enable PIMSM on all VLAN IF interfaces. Here, I will demonstrate the configuration on switch A. Step 3. Configure VLAN IF300 from switch A as a candidate rendezvous point and candidate BSR. Step 4. Enable IGMP on VLAN IF 101 from switch B and VLAN IF 102 and 103 from switch C. I will demonstrate the configuration on switch B. Switch C is configured in a similar way. After you finish the configuration, multicast data sent from the source can be forwarded to the receiver network segments based on multicast routing entries on the switches. You can run the display PIM routing table command to view the multicast routing entries. For example, host A and host B want to receive multicast data from group 225.1.1.1 and the source sends multicast data to this group. Run the display PIM routing table command on switch B and you can see a multicast route with source address 30.1.0.2 and group address 225.1.1.1. The downstream interface of this entry is VLAN IF 101. Step 5. Enable IGMP snooping on VLAN 101, 102 and 103. I will demonstrate the configuration on switch B. Other switches are configured in a similar way. IGMP snooping greatly on the layer 2 enables multicast data to be forwarded at network. You can use the display L2 multicast forwarding table VLAN command to view layer 2 multicast forwarding entries.
For example, when you run this command on switch B, you can see the layer 2 multicast forwarding entry for group 225.1.1.1 in which the outbound interface is GEO01. To obtain more information about common configurations and typical features of Huawei switches, see the All About Switches threads. Where do you find these threads? Using Google search, type in All About Switches site colon Huawei.com in the search field and click any of the displayed links to enter the Huawei Enterprise Support Community. For details about more features, visit the homepage. The All About Switches threads describes typical configurations and users' questions about Huawei switches. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for listening, and goodbye.